As I said before, now you know more than you ever wanted to know about Lucas Fuel Injection. I use that term lightly mucking around, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit more to it than that. So last week, in last week's video, we were looking at the metering distribution, this part of the metering unit, controlling the fuel that goes to the individual cylinder, how that actually works and how that is distributed at the right time and, and metered to the right amount. But now we're looking at the control system. So this is the top bit, which is the vacuum control unit. Well, a manifold vacuum, as we said, through here and works out what's going on when. Controls the amount of metered fuel that will arrive. It won't control when it arrives, because as we said, that's gear driven off of the camshaft and cannot alter. It's only the specific amount so it's effectively your mixture, you know, depending on how much airflow you've got through your manifold and depression and so on. This will control how much metre fuel will come through these pipes and into the injector and into the cylinder. So we'll go and look at one on the bench and have a look at that and we'll see. But that's it, that's what we're doing. So, you know, <laughs> it should illuminate how all of this works, you know, if you watch all the films. So here we are, that was what we were looking at last week, wasn't it? This part, which is here, this lot. Now we turn the page, mixture control unit. So we look at, that's the internals of it. And it's this lot here, isn't it? This part here, that bit. So let's take it apart, have a look, see what we got. So you remember this is your vacuum. This goes to your inlet manifold. And that is, is what will decide what's going on in here. So we need to have a look and see what it is, what actually happens. So we get the top off so we can see this bit. Right, that gets us into here so we can start to see what's happening there. Now I just need, that was Phillips screws, I need a, I need a slot head to get, out, to get this cover plate off, then we can start having a look at that lot. So you have to do these three screws, get these three little screws out that hold this cover plate. This effectively keeps it in place so it won't jump up and move around or whatever. But yeah, you need this to keep it down in place. Right, that gains us access to this lot, which we have our rollers and so on. And, and this is effectively all the control unit. This is actually what does the actual work. What we're looking at here is the diaphragms in here and there's a little roller on the end of there, on the end of this plunger. And that is what controls the position of those little shuttles, do you remember? That's pushing against here, against this bit, under pressure. So when you turn that on, the fuel pressure will push that and that will go into that direction there. So that will come out to there. And then depending on the ramp angle of this, where it is, because this moves in and out, will alter that position, so that, that's what effectively does that control. But we've got, we've got two rollers here, so you've got this one here on this fixed point, and we've got this one here on this piece. But that piece, as you'll see when we pull the choke, can be moved, you see? So it will enrich it. So it can go fully enriched like that, you see? Like that. And that allows that to come right out here, you see? So it changes that angle. See as it goes up here, pushes that in. And then we've got our barometric here, see that bit? That's what works on the barometric, and of course, depending on how far that pulls, that will just move, move this very, just a tiny bit there on that row, row, roller there. Only a little bit, we'll look at it on in situ. So that's roughly what it does. But we'll get it apart and have a proper look. Because there's a bit more to it than that. So we're getting the vacuum control off. As you remember, this, this is what does everything. This, this vacuum does everything. There's nothing connected to this other than the vacuum, other than this pipe. That's all that connects it to the car and this choke cable. But that's not connected to the throttle pedal, is it? Nothing's connected to the throttle pedal, just the vacuum. And this is what confuses people. They expect to see some sort of cable going to it to operate it. Well, it doesn't work like that. You've got to always remember it's vacuum, vacuum operated. We'll just undo that. Get that one out of the way. There you go, right, that's off. So, first one is to look at this. So, as I say, this is your barometric. 
So this is, this is affected by the altitude you're driving at. And that pulls on this one here, which basically effectively moves this, this little choke lever, doesn't it? It does that, moves that, because you see there's a little ramp on there. We'll take this out and have a proper look, see what we got. So this, this will allow me to undo the barometric unit off the back and take it out of here. So I'll just, I'll just undo that whilst it's loose. And then we get the actual unit off here like this. But you have to undo that first, give us something to work with. Now this is done away with on racing engines because they don't worry about that. They can manually adjust this and they'll just set it for the, for the actual racetrack they're, you know, the altitude of the racetrack they're running on. But for road use, you have to have one of these. You know, if you're going over mountains and so on, whatever you need to do, you'd, you'd want it. So there we go, that's undone that. And then if I pull the choke lever, to relieve that from there, I can get that out. So there's that ramp angle you see what I'm talking about? And that actuates on there, doesn't it? And what we've got in here is our little barometric cylinder effectively. There you go, like that, you see? So that's much like what you'd have, a little bellows, little barometric barrows, like you'd have in, inside a um, barometer, that type of thing. So this will expand and contract of, of according to the atmospheric conditions. And obviously as that pulls out that way, as that, as that contracts, it would pull that, and that will allow that to enrich it, because it will pull down on that one, which then allows this one to come down. So that's how that bit works. So you see that there. Now we look at the actual control itself, which is this end. So this is the end that goes to the vacuum, to the, to the actual vacuum on the manifold. So we get that out and have a look, and that'll give us, that'll allow us to take this lot out. And then we see what we're up to. Get a real idea of what we're dealing with. So that little brass bellows we looked at is the barometric correction. So as I say, that, that alters, alters with altitude. This one is the actual vacuum itself, the vacuum control. This does everything. So a good seal on all of this lot is imperative, otherwise you're not, you know, you're not gonna do what it wants to do. You're not going to get behaving properly. And this is what goes wrong with these systems, is, is if you have a misfire down to a fouled spark plug or a condenser breaking down, that type of thing, then of course it will affect the manifold, manifold vacuum and that will upset it and won't run properly, will it? So here we are. So in here, here's your, here's your control, you see? So that moves in and out like that. We've got a control spring here, so it has to overcome that. That's where the vacuum goes into there. And then of course that will cause a vacuum in this chamber which will pull this in that direction, won't it? If, if you get a depression it will pull it that way, which will rev it up, effectively. Um, actually I'm talking about my hat, aren't I? So that pulls this way. So what's this do? So it's about pushing this in. If you push that down, so this will be fully lean like that because it's pushing that all the way in which is pushing the shuttles in which means you've got less fuel going into the shuttles themselves and then when it goes this way it allows it to rev up and that these two rotors also control the amount of, of where the position of that but it's effectively this this bit here you see it's this ramp on here so if we can get that out which we can and have a good look there you go so that's it so you've got the two little rollers there and by changing these rollers, you can tune the system. And you can see there where the, where the other rotor, that little roller there, not rotor, roller, is running on there, on that bit in here, you see. And as I say, then this, this is controlled for this. You've got, you've got this set piece, and then you've got this bit, which is controlled by the barometric, which you just looked at, or by the choke. So you can see I'm pulling the choke out, it moves all that all down away, doesn't it? But, as I said, it's controlled via the barometric normally. So in here, we've got that running on there. So that governs it. So you see the position of this. So if you pull this this way, you see it moves that there, that angle. So it affects, effectively changes the, you know, changes the hill that it's going upon, which then of course affects how much it pushes on here. So barometric there, you see, like that. Barometric correction. And then remove that and then you've just got the choke and as I say then this is on the vacuum itself so we'll just pop that back in there so you can see and then that's the actual row, row to there 
sorry, ro that goes onto the rotor effectively, that little roller there, and that pushes down on the, on the, on the, um, on the diaphragm and pushes against the, the, the rotor inside. So there we go, let's just push this back into here. See, like that. So that pushed, what we're relying on is that being pushed in, aren't we? So if you go that direction, all the way that way, that's pushing that all the way in. So by pushing that all the way in, you're creating less gap on the end of uh, on the end of this diaphragm and the end of where those where we looked at the shuttles. So if there's less gap there, for it to, to you know if you're closing them down, you're allowing less fuel to go into into where the shuttles are. And then as we go this way, effectively when it goes in that direction, we're allowing this whole thing that that one to move out that way. Because you see the ramp angle. So with that allowing that to go that way, that's allowing more fuel to go into those shuttles. So it's richer. So that's fully rich, that's fully lean. And then as I say, if you change that, by moving this one, you see, by moving that with the barometric ore with, with the choke itself, that's allowing it to richen it up as well in any position. It's richer in any position because you're changing the position of that one that's running on. So the best thing to do now is have a quick look at it on the car and look at it running, because we can do the same. We can take this cover plate off, we can start the car up and see what it does. So we're going to do that in a minute. So here's the diaphragm. So when you turn the ignition on and you've got the fuel pump running, that will fuel will go into this area because it goes into this one, doesn't it? And that will push against that like that. So then that pushes against there. There you go like that. See, it pushes against there. And then if we move the choke, see, it will allow it to follow through, which will allow more fuel to go into those shuttles. So we take the top off. And we take that cover plate off, and there we can see all the mechanism. And then what we do is I'll turn the ignition on, and you'll see that bit come out. So that one will come out, and it'll push against this lot. So let's just do that, show you what's going on. So, okay, ignition on, which will put the fuel pump on. You'll hear it running. See how it forces it out? And then if I engage the choke, it'll enrich it, won't it? See? See how that does that? So let's start it up and see what happens. And you'll see what happens when it gets depression on the manifold and what happens when it runs. So let's start her up. Right. I'll adjust the choke. So adjusted the choke back. So you can see the manifold depression is pulling that in that direction, which is pushing that in. We've taken the choke off a bit, so we've altered that angle from being down here to there. And there's our rollers. And it's forcing that in, isn't it? Now if I push that in manually, it'll weaken this off a bit. But well, let's operate the throttle and see what happens with this one. See as it goes up here, pushes that in. So as this goes up here, it allows that to come out, which increases the fuel. Because we're opening up the butterflies, and we're also increasing the fuel, you see? So you see how that, that allows that to go that way. So as I rev it up, we're getting less manifold depression. And it's allowing that to go that way, this piston to go that way, which is allowing this shuttle to go that way, which is allowing that to come out, which enriches it. But we're not touching the barometric there because we're still on choke a bit, you see? So it's not on there, so we're not relying on any barometric. So we said about how that changes the angle of this. So let's come off the choke entirely and see what we got. So 
So it slowed it down a bit. Because we've moved this, which has pushed that that way, which has, which has leaned it off a bit there, hasn't it? So if we open our butterflies up again, let it rev up, see what it does. It's popping a bit because it's still a bit cold, the engine. But you get the idea. When it's doing that, it's because it's misfiring, because it's popping. So maybe I'll just give it a little bit there. Right, and if we have a look at the butterflies, see how they're operating. If we can see them, it's a bit dirty in there because that's part of where it's been overfueling. See what we got? And that corresponds with that one, doesn't it? There we are. So that's how it operates. If I turn it off, we'll see what happens, how it'll all sink back. See? So with no depression on it, it pops back because it's got no depression there now, has it? If I start it up, so I start it up with the fuel pressure behind it, it'll move that in that direction, won't it? Because that, that, that little one will ram out with a roller on the end. See? When I start it up with the depression, it'll pull it that way, won't it? Because it's got no manifold depression at the minute. Until you start it up, then it will have, you see? So, see, so with live depression pulls it that way. And when it shuts off, it'll pop back this way. And that's it really. That's how it operates. So if you want further reading and want to know more, I'd suggest Harm's book from Power Props. We'll have a look at that. And, you know, knock yourself out. <laughs> Learn all about it. I mean, this is just a sort of an overview and a guide. As I say, I'm not the expert on fuel injection. But you can be, if you read Harm's book and buy yourself a Hartridge and spend a few years working on it, you can then be the expert yourself, can't you? This is just an idea. But yeah, it's, uh, but you need to know this much just to be mucking around with them. Um, I use that term lightly, mucking around. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit more to it than that. But yeah, it's, um, yeah. But that's it. So, um, as I said before, now you know more than you ever wanted to know about Lucas Fuel Injection. But yeah, it's worth knowing about. If you're, if you're into these things, it's worth knowing about. And, and you know, now if you're at the paddock somewhere and you can see one of these on a race engine, say, oh, I know, I know a bit about that. I know how that works. So there you are. But um, as you can see from my breath, it's cold and I'm going home. So good night.